Hola amigos, soy Blanca, your online Spanish teacher, and I'm here today with a very interesting video lesson today. We are going to talk about five Spanish common mistakes that Spanish students make at some point. Maybe you are not one of them, but this uh, video is going to be really helpful either if you are a beginner because it will give you the blueprint of the mistakes and you don't need to make them or if you are an advanced to refresh and to have a video where you can see the mistakes and the solution to those mistakes so if you are ready let's go for the first one mistake number uno in spanish we have some nouns such as familia family equipo team Clase, class, gente, people, that they, the meaning is more than one person involved, yeah? Like equipo, team, is not a team of one. Normally it's two or more than um, two people on a team, equipo. But grammatically, they are, all those nouns that I mentioned, they are singular. If you see familia, equipo, clase, gente, they don't finish uh, in S. So therefore, they are singular and we treat it as singular, even though when they mean a plural noun, yeah? For example, if I say, mi familia es española, my family is Spanish. My family is big, it's more than one person, it's not singular, but the noun is singular. So everything that we say with that is going to be singular as well, right? Other thing is if I say, mi familia y you, I'm putting myself in that group as well, then it makes that group plural because if mi familia y yo somos españoles, my family and I are Spanish. Right? But if I'm talking only about my, my family, my family is singular. Uh, mistake number two is about numbers. We can, uh, a lot of time people say ciento when they mean 100. 100 is 100 when it's on its own. It's only ciento when it's followed by more numbers, right? Like 101 is 101. 190 is 190. Another common mistake related with numbers is in English you say 100 and 90, yeah? And whatever the number. In Spanish we don't say and between 100 and the number, yeah? Like 190 is 190. No E in the middle, okay? Another thing is if we say 192, we say 192, but we say the E in 92, 92, because that's how we say 92 in Spanish, 92, no between the 100 and the number that follows, right? Okay, mistake number three. Mistake number three, it's related with verbs that they are, they follow the pattern of the verb gustar, like doler, picar, molestar, right? So if I want to say I have a headache or my head itches, we will say me duele la cabeza, right? We already say me, that means that is to me. We don't, well, we don't need to repeat me because we know that is me is to me so it's, it is not me duele mi cabeza is me duele la cabeza yeah so it's kind of the head it is to me so that, yeah sometimes the literal translation doesn't make much much sense but i want you to give you a glimpse of what it will be right or for example picard Picar means to eat, okay? And it's, it works like the verb gustar. So if my chick it is, I will say, me pica la mejilla. No, me pica mi mejilla, right? We already say me, 
that means that is to me. We don't repeat to say my tick again, right? Perfect. Mistake number four is about verbs this time. We have the verb um, acordarse de y recordar. That both in English means remember. And they are the same verb, but they conjugate in a different way because as you can say acordarse de is reflexive and it always goes with the preposition de. Recordar is not reflexive and does not require a preposition. So imagine I want to translate into Spanish the English sentence, I remember your name, right? I could use both, recordar o acordarse de. So I could say, me acuerdo de tu nombre, yeah? Me, because you're reflexive, acuerdo de, because we need the preposition, tu nombre. And if I want to use the verb recordar, I only will say, recuerdo tu nombre. No reflexive, no preposition made. A lot of Spanish students tend to say, me recuerdo. No, recordar no es reflexivo. Yeah? So recordar is not reflexive, acordarse de is. And last one, mistake numero cinco. It's a bit complex and it will be like a lesson all by itself. So I'm gonna leave the link of one blog that I wrote a while back and it's all according to this, okay? Is the interrogative pronouns que and cual. A lot of people uh, confuse them and it's because we tend to translate what in English like que in Spanish, but sometimes it's not que, it's cual. I'm gonna give you one tip to recognize when to use when, but it's just one. There are several uses and rules for this, okay? Okay, so my tip for this is to ask about information. We have several ways to ask for information, and as I said, this is just a tiny, tiny bit that goes inside the difference between K and qual. okay? We are gonna focus when we ask for information. So when we ask for information and we use the verb ser, we need to use qual. For example, what's your name? Will be, qual es tu nombre? Yeah? Because we are asking for an information and we have the verb ser. The same what was your telephone number? The verb ser and an information, your phone number. Qual es tu número de teléfono? And we use que if we are uh, asking for a particular information, if we have any other verbs or any other words. Yeah? For example, que has hecho hoy? What have you done today? Yeah, it's an info, but it doesn't have the verb ser to be in it, right? So it is okay. So those, my friends, are the five Spanish common mistakes that Spanish students make. I hope you find this uh, lesson helpful. I would love to know, was this a uh, lesson helpful? Leave a comment and let me know. I love to read in you all. And if you enjoyed this video, as always, please, I would really appreciate if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, because as I always say, it really supports my work. Also, I would love to know, have you made these Spanish mistakes before? Either when you are starting or maybe you still make them today. I would love to hear. And also, if there is another mistake that you keep coming across. So please, I would love to hear, what's your biggest mistake when you speak in Spanish? What's the one that it keeps coming to you? I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Now, I leave you enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you next week for another mini Spanish lesson. Hasta pronto!